Good morning. Today is the fifth Sunday after Trinity. This is an order for morning prayer. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O send out thy light and thy truth that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. For the 17th day of the month, the first psalm is Psalm number 86. Mm -hmm. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve thou my soul, for I am holy. My God, save thy servant that putteth his trust in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I will call daily upon thee. Comfort the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and gracious, and of great mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, Lord, unto thy prayer, and ponder the voice of my humble desires. In the time of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou hearest me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There is not one that can do as thou doest. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Own it, my heart, unto thee, that I may fear thy name. I will thank thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and will praise thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the nethermost hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the congregation of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before their eyes. But thou, O Lord God, art full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, plenteous in goodness and truth. O turn thee then unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and help the son of thine handmaid. Show some token upon me for good, that they who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, hast hoped me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 87. Mm-hmm. Her foundations are upon thy holy hills. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Very excellent things are spoken of thee, thou city of God. I will make mention of Egypt and Babylon among them that know me. Behold, Philistia also and Tyre with Ethiopia, lo, in Sion were they born. Yea, of Sion it shall be reported, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High shall establish her. The Lord shall record it when he rideth up the peoples, lo, in Sion were they born. The singers also and trumpeters shall make an answer, All my fresh springs are in thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 86. Mm. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. O let my prayer enter into thy presence, in thy incline thine ear unto my calling. For my soul is full of trouble, and my life draweth nigh unto hell. I am counted as one of them that go down into the pit, and I am even as a man that hath no strength. 
cast off among the dead like unto them that are slain and lie in the grave, who are out of remembrance and are cut away from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in a place of darkness and in the deep. Thine indignation lieth hard upon me, and thou hast vexed me with all thy storms. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me, and made me to be abhorred of them. I am so fast in prison that I cannot get forth. My sight faileth for very trouble. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched forth my hands unto thee. Dost thou show wonders among the dead? Or shall the dead rise up again and praise thee? Shall thy loving kindness be showed in the grave? Or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wondrous works be known in the dark? and thy righteousness in the land where all things are forgotten. Unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and early shall my prayer come before thee. Lord, why abhorrest thou my soul, and hidest thou thy face from me? I am in misery and like unto him that is at the point to die. Even from my youth up thy terrors have I suffered with a troubled mind. Thy wrathful displeasure goeth over me, and the fear of thee hath undone me. They came round about me daily like water, and compassed me together on every side. My lovers and friends hast thou put away from me, and hid mine acquaintance out of my sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the second chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes. I said in my heart, go now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works, I built me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water, to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in mine house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold, and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men, as musical instruments and, uh, and that of all sorts. So I was great, and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. And I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly, for what can the man do that cometh after the king? even that which hath been already done. Then I saw that the wisdom, that wisdom exceedeth folly, as light excelleth the day. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. Then I said in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool, so it happeneth even uh, even to me. 
And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which is now in the days to come shall be all forgotten. And how dieth the wise man as the fool? Therefore I hated life, because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yea, I hated all that my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This also is vanity. Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in equity. Yet to a man that hath not labored therein, he shall leave it for his portion. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what hath man of all his labor and of the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrows and his travail grief. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This also is vanity. Here endeth the first lesson. Te Deum Laudamus. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Cover them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. And it came to pass that, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word will I let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. 
When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draft of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John and the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Here ended the second lesson. The Benedictus Dominus Deus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O God, may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. This past week, I read an article from the Gospel Coalition discussing uh, Generation Z and its, quote, unprecedented identity crisis. We don't have to look very far in our culture to see that questions such as, who am I? What determines my identity? What is the purpose of life? These are of supreme importance to many, many people. While churches and Christians have often rightly responded by pointing to our identity in Christ, the author of the article I read, she suggests that we may be leaving out an important foundational part of the story. That is, we should not begin with a theology, we should not begin rather our theology of identity with who we are, but rather we should start with who God is. So the author writes this. Lists of who you are statements are filled with deep truth, but often little substance. You are loved, but those words hardly make a dent in, in love-hungry hearts if they don't understand who loves them. You are chosen, but chosen by whom? Why were we chosen? You are redeemed, but those words mean nothing if we don't deeply comprehend what we're redeemed from and the greatness of our Redeemer's heart. Far too often we open with the you are, we are, I am story instead of the he is story. Now, the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, where we got our first lesson from today, it also spends a lot of time wrestling with this issue of identity. The book, which is attributed to King Solomon using the title, The Preacher, it's part of the wisdom literature of the Bible. Now, like all of the biblical wisdom literature, Ecclesiastes comes to us in the form of poetry. Have you ever stopped to consider why it is that the Bible gives us poetry as the means of teaching us wisdom? The deep lessons we need in order to wisely live as human beings require more than simply being told what to do. We need more than mere information. We need beauty and metaphor and song and art. To that end, the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom through inspired poetry. So we have the Psalms, which teach us how to process the whole wide range of human emotion by praying and singing to God. We have the Proverbs, which, tells, which tell us how life usually works if we just follow God and his ways. We have Job, which wrestles with the big question of why bad things happen to good people. We have the Song of Songs, which teaches us about the love of Christ for his people by giving us love poetry between a man and a woman. And we have Ecclesiastes, which, which asks about the purpose of life. Ecclesiastes asks whether there is more to life than just living. In Ecclesiastes, the preacher looks at his very successful life, and he asks, is this as good as it gets? So let's open our Bibles to our first lesson today from Ecclesiastes, beginning at verse 1. I said in mine heart, go now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works, I built me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, I had servants born in my house, also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. 
I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar, peculiar treasures of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. So the preacher says that he tried it all. Pleasure, laughter, wine, wisdom, folly, great works of building, acquiring all the material goods and experiences he or anyone else could ever want. Yet, he says, it was vanity and vexation of spirit. It ultimately did him no good. It was, as the old song says, dust in the wind. The preacher then turns to explore wisdom uh, versus folly. After all, isn't Solomon known for his wisdom? Surely wisdom will give him some purpose. Verse 12. Then I saw that wisdom, I'm sorry, and I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which hath been already done? Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness. A wise, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. Then I said in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool, so it happeneth even to me. And why was I then more wise? I said in my heart that this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than the fool forever, seeing that that which is now in the days to come shall be all forgotten. And how dieth the wise men as the fool? Therefore I hated life, because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. So he says, wisdom is indeed much better than folly. It is good to be wise, but there's still a problem. In the end, the wise man and the fool both die. Both will eventually be forgotten. Neither is better off, the preacher concludes, ultimately. The looming question of what is all this for still isn't solved. In fact, the the preacher seems even more depressed, saying that he hated life, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. So if all the stuff and experiences do nothing, and if even wisdom itself is ultimately futile, what is left for the preacher but despair? Verse 18. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in equity. Yet to a man that hath not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what hath man of all his labor and, the, and of his, the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrows, and all his travail grief. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. As we go throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, we find that um, most of the rest of the book really is indeed in a very similar vein. Uh, the preacher searches and explores all the while repeating the frame, this is also vanity. And as we go throughout the, the book, we get very few answers to those very real questions. There's a reason that Ecclesiastes is a favorite in freshman level classes on ancient, ancient literature or Western civilization. Young people getting their first real taste of adulthood can relate to the preacher's journey. 
But the same is often true for us middle-aged folk or who are in the midst of that kind of rat race of, of, of life or even the older folk who are in the twilight of life. We all want to know our purpose. We all want to know that it's all worthwhile in the end. We all have a tendency to look at life and ask, is this all there is? Now in our gospel passage from the beginning of St. Luke uh, chapter five, Luke chapter five, Simon Peter and his fishing partners have similarly been toiling all night without anything to show for it. All their work has been vanity. Now, in my other job as a real estate appraiser, I know the frustration and worry that comes when business is uncomfortably slow, and it's even worse when business seems to be downright dead. I remember a particularly bad time right before I got married in the business. So perhaps Simon and his friends were desperate and in debt like the dramatization of this story on the TV show The Chosen. Or perhaps this was just an annoying day of unfruitfulness such as all sportsmen and businessmen occasionally experience. Well, either way, our Lord intervenes. Jesus steps in, tells them to try one more time, and provides the fishermen with a miraculous catch that is so lavish the boats were in danger of being swamped. Now, I don't know about you, but I would be tempted to see such a windfall as the solution to all my problems. Let's pay off those debts. Let's put a nice nest egg away. Let's fix up the house. Maybe buy that new boat I've been looking at and coast along for a while. Well, Ecclesiastes tells us that um, such an approach really won't bring fulfillment. It won't fix the identity crisis. It won't answer the big questions. And at some level, Simon Peter knew that also. He doesn't work out a plan to get all those fish to market and collect some coin. No, he falls on his knees, humbled before the Lord. Rather than seeing the miraculous provision of fish as a source of his security, Peter realizes that he's come face to face with God's promised Messiah and that Peter is in no shape to stand tall before that kind of holiness. Peter knows his own sinfulness. He knows that there is no health in him and that he is a miserable offender, as our prayer book says. And Peter begs the Lord to leave him. In short, Peter is scared, much more so than he was at the prospect of of losing his livelihood. But Jesus in his wisdom and in his mercy, he gives Peter a new identity and a new purpose. Verse 10 of our passage. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. In the, mira in the miracle of the catch of fish, Peter and his friends saw Jesus for who he really is, the long-promised Messiah, empowered by God to do great acts and to usher in his kingdom. And the Messiah had called them to be his followers. Now, for the next three years, they would indeed get to know who Jesus really is, and through him, they would get to know who God is. They would come to understand what it means to be loved, chosen, and redeemed by Jesus. And they would indeed become fishers of men, spreading the good news of Christ and his kingdom to all the world. As St. Peter wrote in uh, chapter 2 of his first epistle, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, it also was contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. 
But ye are a chosen race. Rather, let's try that again. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So here then we see a counter to the vanity that the preacher despairs over in Ecclesiastes. Here we see a counter to the vanity that we see in the world all around us. Here we see who we are in Christ. The living stones with which God built his spiritual house. The holy and royal priesthood that offers an acceptable sacrifices of spiritual sacrifices to God the chosen generation, the holy nation, the special people who show forth God's praises. He has shown mercy to us miserable offenders. He, he has made us strangers into his people, co-heirs with his son. This then is who we are in Christ, and this then is our identity. And we say this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The service continues with the civil prayers. Let us pray. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, Send down upon our bishops and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace. And, that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests, fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Um,